What's up guys, Dr. Jared here. And these are four things that you should avoid that might be making your degenerative disc or your stenosis low back pain worse. We're gonna talk about what those are, why those are aggravating, and give you some different ideas of some things that you should be doing instead that hopefully help your lower back to feel better. Now this video actually comes in response to a video that I published here on my channel a few weeks ago. This was five things to avoid if you have a herniated disc or a bulge disc. I had a lot of people write and give me comments and say, wow, this helped so much, this was great. But then I had a lot of people comment and ask, are these the same for a degenerative disc problem, a stenosis problem, or an arthritis problem? The answer to that question, unfortunately, is no. I would definitely recommend that we do things a little bit differently for that condition versus the bulge disc condition. Because they're not the same injury, therefore we don't treat them the same. Not all back pain is created from the same source, and therefore we need to treat it a little more individually. That's exactly what I hope to share with you in this video. Now before we jump right into those, let me briefly explain the anatomy behind the degenerative disc and stenosis problem so that you have a better understanding of what you can do to help it to feel better. Your spine is a series of vertebrae stacked one on top of each other. Between each one of those vertebrae you have a disc. You also have your spinal cord that comes down in the back and it exits out of your vertebral column at each individual level. Now the hole that that exits out of is mainly controlled by the height of your disc. In normal conditions, you would have 100% of height in your disc and therefore that hole is 100% of size. But in degenerative disc problems, that disc is not at 100% height. It might be at 60 or 50 or 40% height. Now you'll see that as that disc gets smaller, so too does the hole that that nerve exits out of. That tightening of that hole or that narrowing of that hole and the concomitant pinching on your nerve is the condition that we refer to as stenosis. So degenerative disc refers to the height of the disc. It's just getting a little bit shorter. Stenosis refers to the fact that that nerve is getting pinched. Now, with that, what happens, so right now this, this, uh, this skeleton is facing over here to my left. Now if I bend him over backwards, you'll see what happens to those holes at each one of those levels. They become a little bit more narrow. Now that being said, if you have degenerative disc, those extension, those extension motions or the movements where we bend our back backwards like this tend to aggravate that condition. But what happens if we flex that spine forward and if we kind of flatten it out? You'll see all of a sudden the space between those holes or those holes, the space between the vertebrae, became a lot bigger. So if you have this problem, typically activities where we're rounding forward or where our spine is a little more flat are typically better tolerated. And so with that anatomy lesson in mind, here are four things that might be aggravating your lower back, your degenerative disc stenosis condition, and what you should be doing instead. The first thing that I recommend that you avoid is a position called lazy standing. And this is what it looks like. If you have to stand for a long period of time and if you have a weak core, you're going to go to a position that requires the least effort to stay in an upright position. What that means is that your pelvis rocks forward, typically it creates this arch in your lower back, and then your shoulders come back to keep your center of mass squarely over your feet. And so it kind of looks like this right here. If I lift my arms up, you can see the arch that that creates in my lower back. Now for most people with degenerative disc, they absolutely hate this position. And so how do we get out of it? Well, there's two things that I recommend. First would be regular sitting breaks. I recommend that if you do have to sit for a long period of time, maybe your job requires it, maybe you're at an event where you do have to stand, take regular sitting breaks. I recommend five minutes every hour more if you can work that in somehow. The second thing that we can do is create a more active standing posture. Now, how do we do that, we need to create a posterior pelvic tilt to create more of a flexion in our spine. This is what that looks like. What I want you to do is put your hands on your hips. Now standing normally, your fingers, your fingertips, your index fingertips are probably lower than your thumb. What I want you to do is engage your lower core and engage your glutes to rock your pelvis backwards to bring your pointer finger up closer to the same level as your thumb. So it looks just like that right there. And what you should feel is your vertebrae actually open up as you do that. It should alleviate some of the pinching pain that you experience. So that would be a more active standing posture. Again, we want to contract the glutes, we want to contract the lower abs to keep the pelvis in a more neutral position.
position underneath us. Now, yes, that does take effort to get into that posture. And so what we wanna do is actually train that to become more second nature to you. We do that with the right stretches. We do that with the right exercises. And wouldn't you know, those are things two and three up next on our list. The second thing we want to avoid are the wrong stretches for your degenerative disc. Now, if you've ever searched for lower back stretches before, you've probably seen one that looks like this. We call this the Cobra Pose. This is a great position to work on extension through your back. This is a great position for bulge discs. Unfortunately, now you know that this is probably the worst position that I can put your degenerative disc in as it really narrows down those holes and as it really pinches on those nerves in your lower back. So what should we do instead? Well, if you've got the DDD or the stenosis problem, we need to bend the other way. We need to stretch into flexion to alleviate some of the stress and strain in your lower back. My favorite stretch for that is going to be the child's pose stretch. What we're going to do is kneel down on our, so kneel down on our knees with our hips right over our knees. Hands are flat on the floor right in front of you. Now very simply what we're going to do, keep the hands out in front of you as you sit back down onto your heels and then the chest, or excuse me, the chin tucks down into your chest. And what you should feel with this is just a good comfortable stretch throughout your entire spine, throughout your entire lower back, really opening up those foramen or those holes for the nerves to pass through. Now the other thing that I like to show patients is if your pain is off to one side, let's say for example my pain is really isolated on my left side, what we can do is walk the hands the opposite direction, so I'm walking my hands over here to the right, to actually create a little side bending in the spine to open up those holes and to stretch that side of your back out even a little bit more. So that's another good option. Typically what I recommend is that you're gonna hold each stretch for 20 seconds and then repeat that one three times. The next thing you're going to want to avoid are the wrong core exercises. Yes, it's important that we strengthen your core. Yes, it's important that we strengthen your lower back, but also it's crucial that we avoid the wrong exercises to do that. So you may have seen something like this. This is called a Superman extension. Laying on your stomach, you lift your chest and you lift your legs up off of the ground. I agree that this is a great exercise to strengthen your lower back, but again, this is promoting that extension position in your spine. Absolutely not the best idea if you do have disc degeneration going on. Instead, what we need to do is train and strengthen this neutral spine position. When we talked about lazy standing, I had you engage your glutes and engage your lower abs to correct your pelvis. That's the position that we want to strengthen. My favorite way to do that is going to be with some posterior pelvic tilts with a march. And so here's what I want you to do instead. You're going to lay down on your back with your knees bent. Now in this position, your back might be up off of the floor. The first thing that I want you to do is with your pelvis, rock your pelvis backwards to push your lower back down into the floor. And so your entire lower back should be in contact with the floor below you. Now in this position, what we wanna do is engage the abs. And so what I want you to do is draw your belly button in towards your spine, use your muscles to pull your stomach in and create a nice abdominal brace. For example, if I was gonna punch you in the stomach, I want those muscles to be nice and tight in that position. And so create that brace just like that, hold that position. Now what I want you to do is march with your left leg and then march with your right leg and then relax. Again, it's not the marching that's the exercise, it's holding this braced position. This is where we're trying to strengthen is right here through the core. So rock your hips backwards, pull your belly button in towards your spine and brace your stomach. And then we're going to march march, and then if you can continue to sustain this contraction in your core, you can even do more and more marches. Typically what I recommend is that we work our way up to about three sets of 20 repetitions with those marches. Now the glutes, you can also strengthen those at home to hold your hips in a better position. My favorite way to do that would be with some glute bridges. Same position, we're gonna lay on our back, now what I want you to do is engage your glutes, so squeeze your butt together to lift your hips up off of the mat, hold one, two, three, and then return right back down to the starting position. With this one, it's crucial. I don't want you to go so high that you create an arch in your back. You should actually be able to maintain that pelvic tilt to engage those glutes a little bit more. You might just need to not go quite so high as you do these glute bridges to hold that nice, strong position. Again, really contracting the glutes up at the top, hold for about three seconds return back down to the starting position. Typically on that one, I recommend three sets of 10 to 20 repetitions. 
The last thing that I want you to avoid that might be aggravating your DDD or stenosis condition is sleeping. Okay, really, it's sleeping with poor posture or sleeping in a poor position. There are two positions specifically that I want you to avoid and here's the reason why. First is laying on your stomach. Now, first of all, this is the worst position that you can possibly sleep in. It's bad for your neck, it's bad for your upper back, but it's also bad for your lower back because it creates such an arch. Again, it's that extended position that it's created in your lower back when you sleep on your stomach. That's the position that we just absolutely need to avoid. But a lot of people don't realize that sleeping on your back can be equally as detrimental and here's the reason why. You probably have tight hip flexors. When you sleep on your back with your legs extended out straight, those tight hip flexors pull on your hips and they pull on your lower back to create again this arched extended position that DDD and stenosis do not like. So what do we do instead? Well there's two things that I would recommend. First of all, let's try sleeping on your side instead. If you can sleep on your, sti on your side, and with this I typically recommend that you put a small pillow here in between your knees, but if we sleep on our side, we can actually introduce a subtle bend in our knees. I don't need it to be tucked way up like this, and I also don't want them straight down uh, below you like this. But if we can introduce just that subtle bend in our knees, that unlocks our hip flexors, that also puts our, our pelvis in this posteriorly tilted position, and all of a sudden it becomes, very, or it becomes a much better position for your back to stay in throughout the night. Now, the other position that I recommend for this is actually sleeping on your back. You're like, wait, Jared, you just said I shouldn't sleep on my back. Yeah, I said you shouldn't sleep on your back with your legs out straight. But what you can do is grab a couple of pillows and tuck those underneath your knees. Now, in this position, as I lay down on my back, you'll see that my hip flexors are unlocked. They're no longer pulling on my lower back and hips. And I can also introduce this posterior pelvic tilt position, this flattening of my back that's going to open up my foramen, open up those holes, and help the degenerative disc condition to feel better. So if you have problems while you're sleeping, those are just certainly two positions that I recommend that you try out. Now, just like it's vital that you avoid these wrong positions and activities with your back, it's crucial that you actually do the right exercises and stretches to help your back to feel better. If you're interested in what those look like, I've actually got an entire home routine that you can follow along. What I want you to do is click on this link right here. That's the home routine for DDD and stenosis. For some reason, YouTube thinks that you might like this video right here, so check that out. See if YouTube's right. If you haven't subscribed to Tone and Titan yet, hit the circle right here. I'd love to see you back for future videos here on my channel. Until next time, we'll see you soon here on Tone and Titan.